been held on the traditional unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh Coast Salish peoples. The meeting is being live streamed and the audio and visual recording will also be available to the public for viewing after the meeting. The footage of the meeting may be viewed inside and outside of Canada. It is our board's responsibility and in particular mine as chair to ensure that our board meetings are conducted in a respectful manner. As we are the board of trustees for a school district, it is important that everyone here today models the behavior that we would expect of our students in their schools. And I have to pass on the regrets from trustee Bob Parrott as she is not well and unable to attend this evening. And move, so moving on to our program highlight, and it is really the highlight of our evening, and it's having students present to the board. And I will hand over to Ron McDonald, who is in charge of all things sustain, around sustainability in the district. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll just make the risk of correcting by saying all of our school communities are part responsible for all things sustainability, and I don't carry that burden solely or nor, nor get the glory for any of it. My name is Ron McDonald, uh, uh, and I am the manager of energy and sustainability at the school district. And tonight I'm here to uh, welcome uh, two uh, students who are going to present on a, uh, on a very inspiring and uh, amazing event, the 2019 Student Sustainability Conference. Uh, uh, Samantha Lynn and Stephanie Kwan are two students in our district and they'll introduce themselves. But I just want to highlight what they're about to present upon is a student-led, student-created, student-organized, student-delivered conference on sustainability by students for the subjects and topics that are of interest to students. No adults were intervening in the creation of the content of what they do, and that is one of the great features and powers of this sustainability conference. So would you please welcome Samantha and Stephanie. Uh, my name is Stephanie Kwan, and I'm a grade 12 student at Eric Hamber Secondary. Hi everyone, my name is Samantha Lynn and I'm currently in grade 11 at Prince of Wales Secondary. And together, Stephanie and I are the co-chairs of this year's sustainability conference. So a little bit about what is this conference exactly. So the, v uh, the VSB Sustainability Conference, or VSBSC for short, is a youth-led, as Ron was saying, environmental conference that was started by youth uh, seven years ago. So this is our seventh year of the conference. And our goal is to promote a green lifestyle for all youth um, in the school district. And we want to promote a green lifestyle where, you know, maybe that includes uh, zero waste lunches and sustainable transportation and reducing our waste. And we do this through keynote speakers, diverse panelists, and uh, by providing a zero waste lunch for all our attendees. So annually, a group of nine hardworking students from all across the VSB come together and uh, work every weekend to plan this conference. Uh, we, with the constant support of our sponsor, Ron McDonald, and the VSB Sustainability Department, we've been able to put this on for our seventh year. Uh, um, so our goal is to encourage environmental action through a variety of workshops, keynotes, a networking fair, and a collaborative activity at the end of the day. Last year we had workshops from organizations such as C-SMART and Metro Vancouver Youth for Action, and this year we have eight new workshops that um, give participants a hands-on hands -on learning experience um, from organizations such as the David Suzuki Foundation and Earth Save Canada. So as well, we wanted to prioritize um, Indigenous land acknowledgements this year by featuring an Indigenous speaker. And on top of that, we're also going to have a musician. And as I mentioned previously, we're going to have panelists from across Vancouver who will be talking about their lives and any advice that they have for uh, high school students. This year's conference is on April 29th from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. at Prince of Wales Secondary School. And the conference is free for anyone to attend. And it's on a Pro-D day, so it should be easier for students and teachers to attend. Um, this year's theme is Catalyst. And since the definition of a catalyst is something that speeds up change, we think of it as a representation to um, give 
students the skills and knowledge they need to step forward and enact positive change. And we want the conference to be something that helps people start their journey of leadership and sustainability. And we want to express the importance of collaborative leadership, long-term change, and thinking about all aspects of sustainability. Um, and this is our schedule for the day. The overarching goal of any sustainability conference is to educate and empower all of our attendees. And as Stephanie mentioned before, anyone is welcome to come. So our focus is high school students, but all of you are welcome to come, any adults in the audience, any interested teachers, parents, siblings, anything like that. Uh, we want this conference to be a starting place for people to enact positive change and also promote just awareness of economic, social, and cultural environmental sustainability. Um, this year, we're also trying to encourage students from outside of just Vancouver to attend. So we're trying to reach to more private school students, homeschooled students, and out of district attendees. So the people that you see on this slide are our other planning team members. So as you can see, we represent uh, five schools from across the VSB. Um, in addition to Stephanie and I. And each, meet, uh, each weekend, we've been working since September uh, when we first got together and made our team. And each weekend since then, we've been meeting for a few hours every weekend to uh, plan the logistics, catering, workshops, uh, venue, and just any logistics and publicity that goes along with creating a conference like this. Um, we're really, really thankful and lucky to have community partnerships with large grants from the school board and Taking It Global. And we've also received sponsorships from organizations across Metro Vancouver. We're very grateful for the privilege to host this conference in a VSB school. And we'd like to thank Ron McDonald for all his support in the planning process. So this is just a little screenshot of our website where you'll be able to register uh, when we update it. <laughs> uh, so to register, it should be up very soon, but just click on the registration link and all of you will be able to register as an adult attendee. Uh, yeah, so we hope to see you there. Thank you for listening. <laughs> So thank you, Stephanie and Samantha, and I'm looking at Trustee to see if we have any questions for you. Uh, Trustee Reddy. Thank you, through the chair. Thank you so much for your presentation. Um, obviously, you put a lot of work into what you're doing. What kind of advice would you give to other young people who want to start something similar in their school? <laughs> I would say personally, just for every young person to just find what they're interested and just look for ways to get involved. Like that's what I did. Uh, one of the, when, last year, one of the previous chairs, some of you may know her, Emily, she was the one who really encouraged me to get involved with this conference and that's how I'm here today. So I think just knowing what you're interested in and just actually taking steps to get yourself involved. Um, like I think approaching a project like this is kind of scary and it was definitely out of my comfort zone but just like coming here tonight you see like all the people that are there to support you and all the people that believe in you and it really pushes me to trust in what I can do and push forward. So thank you again and um, you know as uh, Ron noted he is not, oh sorry, student trustee Hazel Bengalian. Um, thank you, Chair. Again, I would like to thank Stephanie and Sam for coming in and presenting the VSBSC. Um, I would just like to know, since you guys are students, how you were able to manage um, something like this conference at the scale that it is, um, and how are you able to manage it being students? Hmm. <laughs> so definitely, I guess it would have started last year for both of us. We were just brought on by and like led last year by the previous chairs who really set us up well, I think. They really equipped us with the skills that we needed. And also 
the foundation that was there with like Ron and the sustainability department, like that really helps us. Whenever, whatever questions we have, whatever resources we need, they're always so ready and willing to help us. And I guess just because sustainability is something that I'm personally so interested in, it doesn't feel like an extra thing at all. Like it feels like something that I should be doing because I really care. And I know that something of this scale has the ability to influence uh, youth all across Vancouver. And as we're trying to say, like uh, out of district as well. Trustee Ballantyne. Oh, I'd just like to thank you for your presentation and for what you're doing because I think it has a great impact on all the other kids in, this, in the district. So thank you for that in advance of the conference. And I'll, I'll just finish up by saying, as I, as I was saying, um, Ron McDonald is not responsible for all the sustainability efforts in the district and uh, Stephanie and Samantha are, are demonstrating that um, this evening. So thank you for taking on this as I think Hazel's acknowledging a lot of additional work in, uh, while you're your students in our district. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time. Thank you. So moving on to uh, item three on the agenda is the adoption of the minutes. Um, the first set of minutes we are considering is the meeting of January 28th, 2019. And I'm looking for a mover and a seconder for these minutes. Uh, mover is Trustee Ballantyne, seconded by Trustee Gonzalez. And if there's any discussion of the minutes themselves, then the vote to approve the minutes is all those in favor. We have unanimous vote to approve the minutes of the January 28th. And then we move on to the meeting of January 13th, uh, mover and a seconder. February Sorry, February 13th, uh, mover and a seconder. So Trustee Cho and a seconder, Trustee Reddy. And any discussion on these minutes? And then to vote to approve the minutes, all those in favor? A unanimous vote in favour. And I missed on the other ones, matters arising. And there's, uh, I'm looking to see if there's any matters arising from these ones. And the final set of minutes are from the meeting of February 25th, 2019. Uh, I'm looking for a mover. Uh, Trustee Hansen and a seconder, Trustee Wong. And any discussion on these minutes? Trustee Champ Headley. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I noted that the um, uh, in attachment B, um, where references a public survey, um, it says the public survey uh, is open from April 8 to April 26, um, 2019. Um, and uh, that is not 21 days, that is in fact 18 days. And um, I'm wondering if this is where I would move to uh, fix this or if I would move in the matters arising. I think the matters arising, like, because this is the uh, attachment that was presented at the uh, meeting, so it's an accurate record of the meeting, but we can address that as a matter arising from the minutes. Perfect, thank you. So for the minutes themselves, the vote to approve, all those in favour? A unanimous vote in favour. And back to Trustee Champ Headley with a matter arising. Um, thank you. I would like to move, um, I guess, to change um, the public survey um, opening and closing dates to April 9 to April 30th of 2019, um, as that would be 21 days, um, and it would also nicely coincide with the presentation of the draft budget, um, as well as the end of the month. So um, that seems like a, um, a good set of dates to have for the public survey to be open. Um, the text on the screen is the is what you're proposing. Yes. Yeah. 
So that's moved by Trustee Champ Headley and seconded by Trustee Gonzalez. Um, so discussion, any discussion amongst trustees? So I will ask our staff if um, the proposed change till April 30th matches with the uh, report out on Monday, May 6th of the public survey. Is that sufficient time for staff to do the work to prepare that report? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, we can make that work. Okay, thank you. Okay, then uh, if there's no other discussion, then moving on to the uh, motion. All those in favor? A unanimous vote to extend the survey timeline. So, thank you, Trustee Champ Headley. And are there any other matters arising from those minutes? And if not, then we will move on to the superintendent's update. And thank you, Superintendent Suzanne Hoffman. Thank you, Chair Fraser. I'm pleased to be able to provide the superintendent's update. I will say that the beginning of my presentation, once it's on the screen, um, is again a review. And Greg, if we could go back to the start. Thank you. There we go. Anybody who has vertigo, that was probably troublesome. <laughs> okay, we're good. There we go. Um, so for previous board meetings, I was able to review for the board just the priority of looking and having conversations about our student outcomes, which should be our primary mandate as a board of education or yours and ours as staff. We've talked previously about how the School Act defines the role of the Board of Education in the context of improving outcomes for the youth that we serve. Your own board policy about the role of the board and also the role of the superintendent talks to the need to have us focus on outcomes for students. The educational research was provided at one of our meetings. I also shared with the board around the Deeper Learning Dozen, which is a research initiative that our school district is involved with, with 11 other. Uh, school districts from North America, again, looking at deeper learning and how do we have our students um, master learning, become engaged with their learning and be very creative about what it is that they're learning. And I've also shared with you at a very high level a roadmap as to how we can move this conversation forward. And as you know from my conversations with you, I'm excited to undertake those. Tonight, there's sort of three categories that I'd like to talk about. Um, some initial conversations that have been underway some examples of outcomes for student success, and then about a roadmap as we begin to move and look forward. So again, defining student success and what that actually means to us as a school district and to you as a board of education, I think is the first step that we need to undertake um, in order to have conversations about what is student success and how do we know that the many things that we are doing as a school district are actually making a difference in the lives of young people. Um, through staff on the team, I've had in, or we've had initial conversations with some of our stakeholder representatives, um, and we have begin, begun to try and set up some sessions to plan and have conversations. And I know we've spoken to our teachers and our administrators, and also I know with our DPAC at one of our four by four meetings, um, mentioned to them too that we would also start this conversation. And what we would like to do is set up through the course of the school year. Um, some of those conversations as we go forward. And very much the format or the content of those dialogues would be an inquiry-based format, and it would really be talking about how do we do actually define um, what student success is. What I'd like to do now is just share with you some of our um, measures or one of the measures, that of completion with you around how we are doing as a school district. And this is not meant to be indicative or all-inclusive of how we would define student success, but it is one frequently used measure throughout the province in talking about from a system, how do we know what we're doing is actually working. So these are the completion rates. It says competition, it should say completion. This is not a competition, that's a huge typo that I did not catch, my apologies. Vancouver District completion rates. Um, and generally what I would like to show you and explain to you on that graph is that we are talking about the completion rates for six years for residents. So we do not include in uh, this particular graph our outcomes for our international students. It is students that are here within the VSB. 
For those of you that are in the audience, the blue column is the Vancouver School District's completion rates, and the orange column, so that we can be comparative, is the provincial completion rates. On a good news story, as you look at the blue columns, the completion rate overall for the Vancouver School District is trending upward. Um, and you can see the difference between well, how we perform as the VSB with the province and that in 13-14, we were 2% above the provincial average for completion. We were 1.8% above in 14-15. In 15-16, we were 2.6 percentage points above, 2.2 in 16-17, and 2.8 in 17-18. And in looking at um, moving the dial with respect to completion, it takes a fair number of students within our school district to actually make percentage point differences. But you can see that consistently over the past a few years, we have been approximately two percentage points above what the actual provincial average is. And this is the most commonly used measure um, for graduation in BC. When we have information like this, which is global across our district, there are opportunities to then dig a little bit deeper into the actual um, data. And what I'd like to show you uh, are two upcoming examples, one around gender and one around our Indigenous students. But overall, for the VSB, completion rates are a positive story and we're doing good work and we are making a difference for our students. This graph shows the difference between our gender. On the left-hand side are the six-year completion rate for our female students. And on the right-hand side are the six-year completion rates for our male students. And again, the blue columns are for the VSB and the orange columns are for um, the province. So when we look at the females, and you compare the females to the males for the Vancouver School District. In 1314, our females completed with approximately 5.6% more than our male completion rates. In 1415, the difference was approximately 6%. Again, when you look at 1516, the difference was 3%. So the gap between our male and female completion results um, got closer. In 1617, we looked at 4.4%. In 1718, was a 5.5% difference. As you can see, when you compare uh, the VSB, the blue bar, to the orange bar of the province, again, our students are outperforming the provincial average, but one needs to be mindful that when you look at the provincial average, there are a multiplicity of, of school districts and of diversity across our province um, that needs to be considered. And really, it should be about our, ourselves looking within to see how over time we are actually making positive differences for our students. This is the troubling graph and the one that definitely uh, causes me great concern when you look at this. This is our completion rate for our Indigenous students, the VSB being the blue line and the orange bar being the provincial line. So when you look at the completion rates for our Indigenous youth um, here in Vancouver, to me it is incredibly troubling because we do not have our stu students complete proportionately comparable to our non-Indigenous students or all of our students that I showed you on previous slides. And when you also do the comparison to our provincial average, um, again, we have great cause for concern. The only positive that I can actually see within that graph is that we are on an upward trajectory. And I'm assured by staff that that trend will continue upward for the end of this particular school year. But it is of great concern. Um, as you look at that work. So you can see from our provincial averages a few years ago, the blue line being Vancouver, we were just above 30%, and then most recently at 56% um, for this past school year. When I am talking with staff, and I'd like to acknowledge the work that Chaz Desjardins and Jody have done, as well as the Indigenous education team, I think we have been very thoughtful over the past year and have plans in place as we continue to look forward um, for the work that we have to do to continue to close that gap of achievement between our Indigenous students and our non-Indigenous students so that they complete, complete secondary school at the same level as our non-Indigenous students. Um, there are a number of uh, factors that they have identified for me um, with respect to why we are improving. They talk about the strong relationships that we're now beginning to form with our Indigenous communities and how we have work further to do, but that is a very positive step. Um, again, our strong team, um, the Indigenous Education team with Chaz and Joni, Jody are doing some exemplary work and we appreciate that. We have a grad advisor that is working with our school district and he is um, goes to every secondary school and our alternate ed sites. 
and every single grade 12 Indigenous student has now been tracked on a spreadsheet. Um, and we are looking at those students on a case-by-case -case basis and on a school-by-school -school basis to see how they are doing and what um, the projected completion for those young people will be. And we have also um, joined with the Ministry of Education to look at an equity scan, and that is our district as well as other school districts that are looking to see what we can do collectively to improve the completion rates for our Indigenous youth. Again, as I indicated, we do see that this trajectory is positive, but not good enough, and we will continue to do the work that needs doing in order to complete um, the outcomes for our Indigenous youth. And I look forward one year from now to continuing to see the blue gap, the blue bar continue to rise and the gap continuing to narrow, not only between the provincial average, um, but also with our non-Indigenous um, students. And speaking about the roadmap, um, we were looking to have an initial planning session in February, March. Um, it's a challenge. We have lots of evening meetings as a board and being respectful of having all of our stakeholders at that session. We're now looking at early April after spring break for our first session. And um, we have those sessions, a tentative date already uh, planned. And I know that date went out on email today to our stakeholder representatives. And again, the intention of those sessions will be to look at student success and who are all of our learners and what can we do to make a difference for each and every one of them. And then we will assess plan um, and continue this work in the upcoming school year um, with a focus on outcomes for students. And I very much look forward to seeing completion being one measure, but what are some of the other measures of student success that we can look at um, as a school district to demonstrate to the board um, the importance of the work that we're doing and the difference that the, it can hopefully make for the students in our district. And that completes my report. Thank you, Superintendent. And next we have our report from Student Trustee Hazel Pangillian. Sorry, uh, moving, sorry, stepping back. Uh, I think we have a question for the Superintendent from uh, Trustee Cho. Uh, thank you, through the Chair. I just wondered, are we communicating with other school districts that have higher completion rates for Indigenous students to find out what their best practices are and incorporating some of that into what we do? Thank you for the question. And yes, we most certainly are. The equity scan is a provincial initiative, so that affords us that opportunity. And I know that Joe DeLangua is from the Cedar Sky School District previously, and in the Cedar Sky School District, Indigenous youth did graduate or complete secondary school on par with non-Indigenous youth. So I know that she is taking some of the strategies from that school district and sharing them with our own team here um, so that we continue to learn from others and have equal success. So thank you for the question. Okay, so I apologize for moving on a little too quickly. Are there any other questions of the superintendent? So the, the, now we will move on to our student trustee report. Thank you, Chair. Um, so to start off my student trustee report, I would like to reflect on the student forum that, um, what, that happened uh, February 7th at the Italian Cultural Center. And as a student trustee, I was invited and was very happy to attend amongst the students representing all 18 secondary schools, um, including alternate ed programs and VLN students. I enjoyed hearing um, the similar ideas shared by students during the group discussions. And the ideas around the conference room were very similar. And it was really great to see the solidarity between 200 plus students <clears throat> excuse me, that were attending the forum. The student forum overall was successful um, in collecting student input on various aspects of school that students find crucial to their success. And at the forum, I was also joined by the VDSC president, Simon Q, who was invited to attend as a representative of our district student stakeholder group. And for those who aren't too familiar with VDSC, um, the Vancouver District Student Council, or VDSC for short, is a committee dedicated to um, oh, of dedicated student representatives from all 18 secondary schools and 22 alternative programs at the Vancouver School Board. And within VDSC's mandate, um, it is um, crucial for us to provide student input in the planning and decision making of the district. So having said that, um, one of the themes that emerged at the forum was that students overall desire to make their issues known to the district. And this um, 
is a role of the VDSC and as a stakeholder group and also um, me as a student trustee. So we, the executive team of the VDSC and I do acknowledge that we really need to focus um, on directly reaching out to the broader student population. Um, it was clear to me that the VDSC and myself as student trustees should make spreading awareness of VDSC and student trustee mandates our priority. As you all may know, um, the VDSC has traditional events that do support part of our mandate that um, involves student um, to student connections. And we do that through our events like Arts Gala, Sister School Switch, and Canley Cup. However, as a result of hearing um, the students at the forum and realizing the lack of knowledge and understanding as to where and how students can voice their opinions, the VDSC executive and I will be meeting within the next month to discuss ways to, eh, sorry, to effectively and efficiently communicate with students of our district. And I really look forward to updating the board on that discussion during our next gym. So thank you very much. And um, any questions from trustees? Uh, Trustee Gonzalez? Uh, thank you, and thank you for that update. <clears throat> I'm just curious, uh, will we be getting something formal back? Um, I don't know if you know the answer to that about the forum itself as a follow-up to how it went. And well, Yes, thank you. Is that a question for the superintendent? Uh, yes, if, uh, if Hazel doesn't know, or yet perhaps the superintendent knows more. <laughs> Um, through the chair to uh, Estralita. Um, from my understanding, uh, Linda and Patricia Leg have been working with the Student um, Forum Planning Committee to, um, I think they're in like premature stages of planning. So I haven't personally heard any feedback from the forum or what it is they're going to be doing to apply or utilize the student input. But um, yeah, it's pretty early on from what they were saying. Yes, it is the intention of staff through our students to bring the information back to the board. Follow up and Rob Shindell, Associate Superintendent, is nodding yes behind you, so yes. Trustee Reddy. Thank you so much, uh, Trustee Hazel. I was just wondering too, if some of the comments in your report would include some ideas young people had about how they would want to have their voices or opinions heard, if that already occurred and when it does occur, if it could be included. Um, through the chair to Trustee Reddy. Um, the discussion that I was planning to have was only with the executive team since the members on the executive team have been a part of VDSC for three, two to three years. So I do, um, I would like to look to them for suggestions and, you know, um, strategies to do that. But I would be willing to open it up to like the general um, VDSC members so they can um, put their input in as well. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And I'm really pleased to hear that the you know the student forum was, um, you know, collecting student input on aspects of school that students find crucial to their success. So the focus at the student forum is on student success, and the superintendent's update was on student success. So I, I'm I'm sure there's a lot of alignment for getting the student voice into the discussion of how we as a board can support student success in the district. So we can move on to uh, agenda item six, uh, which is the reports from our um, standing committees. And the first is uh, policy and governance committee and the report from the meeting of February 6th. And the chairperson is Trustee Ballantyne. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to move the meeting of February 6th. I remember we received the report. Thank you, and looking for a seconder. Trustee Champ Headley. And is there any discussion on the um, report itself? So then to uh, approve receipt of the report, all those in favor? So your, your unanimous uh, support for that. And matters arising, Trustee Ballantyne. Thank you, uh, Chair. Um, the first uh, matter that was, was arose was the uh, bo board work plan that the uh, 2019 to 2022 board work plan be adopted by the board of education subject to dates being updated and an updated version be brought forward to the june 5th 2019 policy and governance committee 
Okay, thank you, Trustee Ballantyne, and a seconder, please. Trustee Hansen, and I know this was discussed at the um, committee. I don't know if there's any further discussion amongst trustees at the board table. So then move on to uh, vote on the motion as presented. All those in favor? Unanimous in favor. Thank you, Trustee Ballantyne. And the second is the accumulated surplus policy that the Board of Education approves the accumulated operating surplus policy for inclusion of the board policy handbook as policy 19 has attached. Thank you, Trustee Ballantyne. And a seconder for that motion? Trustee Wong? And uh, again, I know there's discussion at the meeting. Uh, any further discussion at the board table? So then we'll move on to the vote on the motion of the accumulated surplus policy. All those in favor? Unanimous support. And the third uh, audit committee uh, slash finance committee responsibilities that the Board of Education adopt the revisions of the board policy in attachments C and D as outlined below. Remove, first remove original audit committee responsibility 6.211 from the audit committee, which is a review quarterly finance financial reports and related information. The audit committee only meets four times a year and the finance committee already has that responsibility. And the secondly, remove the original audit committee responsibility of 6.212 um, and add it to the finance committee as responsibility 5.2.3. The finance committee already, already has responsibility for providing input into the budget development process in 5.2.2 and makes sense that they it makes sense that the committee would also be responsible for reviewing budget assumptions and priorities. Thank you, Trustee Ballantyne, and a seconder for that motion. Trustee Hansen. Uh, again, there was discussion at committee. Any further discussion here? Okay, so to move on to the vote, all those in favor? Unanimous in favor. Thank you, uh, Trustee Ballantyne. And is that all of the matters arising? Trustees, okay, thank you. So then we move on to the Facilities Planning Committee and the Chair of the Committee, uh, Trustee Wong. Chairperson, move receipt of the report of the meeting of February 13, 2019. And seconded by Trustee Ballantyne. Uh, any discussion on the report itself? Okay. So uh, the vote to receive the report, all those in favor? A unanimous vote in favor. Um, matters arising, Trustee Wong. Chairperson, um, basically the meeting had two agenda items and with it um, have uh, motions pertaining to those two items. Uh, first, if I may, uh, with regards to Eric Hamber's seismic project, move that the board request the province to provide additional funds for the Eric Hamber Secondary School seismic upgrade project to ensure the space allocations for an auditorium, gymnasium space and arts programming facilities that the current Eric Hamber Secondary School are maintained in the replacement school, considering the existing school will be used as temporary accommodation for secondary students in future seismic upgrade projects, thereby expediting the SMP in Vancouver and also providing additional space for community purposes. Thank you, Trustee Wong, and a seconder for that motion. Trustee Cham Pedley. Um, Trustee Wong, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, or? Okay. It, uh, just briefly. Um, uh, we're trying to, uh, the board or the committee um, at the time, with the presentations that came, um, we're looking at ways to um, uh, ask the pro province for additional funds something that's different than where the province can say that all all districts and all school projects replacement projects um, these are the funds based on the um, area standards so we're looking at some difference here for for eric hamber 
Um, and, and the difference is, is the last part of the motion is that because air camber will be used as uh, uh, the old school will be used as swing space, that that is our way of seeking from the provincial government the difference um, just so we don't start a um, precedent setting that there, if we can seek funds separate from the regular area uh, allocation standards. So that's that's where this uh, motion is stemming from. Thank you, Trustee Wong. Uh, any other trustees? Trust, student Trustee Hazel Pengillian. Um, thank you, Chair, and um, through the Chair to um, Trustee Wong. Um, I would like to commend the Finance Committee for actually supporting the needs of Hamburg students, um, but I would also like to ask um, whether um, the board will need to request extra funding for cases such as these, um, where the algorithm determined um, that for the space needed for the school is not does not house like the desirable programs for the school, and whether we would have to go through this process again if this were to come up. Trustee Wong. Chairperson, yes. Um, as we go through from project to project and had, as we had the discussion for other schools, um, the answer is probably yes. Um, but this particular, um, the agenda item was specific on Eric Hamber, and that's the one where we reached at this point. So um, if there are uh, areas where we can reach out to the province for an exception, and I call these exception bases or something where we don't set off uh, or, un or, or expect the response of um, all other schools get the same. So this is a, this is a difference than, than the other ones. If we can find that difference for other ones and with a reasonable argument to the province, I think that's, you know, that's, that's for the board to, to bring to the province. And we heard loud and clear from uh, a number of the delegations and a lot of the emails from Eric Hamber, and they help us. I mean, that's the whole purpose of, of the committees and hearing from the community is they're helping us with regards to how to address uh, and move forward. And the next two motions um, sort of go in that area as well. So we're hearing from the, from the community and, and addressing it accordingly. Okay, thank you, Trustee Wong. Um, if there's no other, okay, go ahead. Well, actually, maybe I can uh, add my comment on top of uh, Trustee Wong's response that um, uh, you're probably aware that the board has written to the Ministry of Education about the area standards and how the impacts they could be having on student education. And um, the response we got back was that the ministry was contemplating a review, but there is no concrete timeline or action around that at this time so um, you know we remain hopeful that that will be acted on and another piece of the Eric Camber project is that our staff continue to uh, look at other secondary schools that have been recently built that do have um, more space for the performing arts and for performances and to understand how the area standards applied at those schools um, could give a you know a better outcome than is being seen at Hamber. So I think we are continuing to work on two different uh, approaches there. Um, thank you, Chair and Trustee Wong for the um, for the explanation. It helps um, me understand it a little bit more. Um, but I was also wondering about, a, this relates to this, but um, a common theme where individual schools with different programs and circumstances can exactly fit into a design that doesn't really consider the needs of the students at the school being the programs and whatnot. So I was wondering if the consultation process wouldn't happen after but before and to somehow work with the ministry to incorporate like the um, needs of specific school programs as opposed to um, just working with how much um, space is allocated for the students but looking at a the whole, the school as a whole, if that can be answered. <laughs> so I, I think what you're saying is that um, understanding that the district has to work with the Ministry Area Standards um, 
can there be a better process for incorporating the unique needs of each school that goes through the process? Um, I think, you know, I'm, I'm, I know that we have to work with the provincial government under the current MOU and that our staff are doing some work with the ministry to understand uh, what a good process, you know, the MOU is at a fairly high level, um, you know, the text in there is fairly limited and we're working with the ministry to understand the better processes that we can put in place to have a good, to have a more successful um, route through the project and to have more, have consultation as we can, un, as best we can under that agreement. Um, so again, that is a work in progress. I think Hamber has um, uncovered a lot of elements that have not been encountered before with the MOU. It is the first um, secondary school in Vancouver that's gone through this process. And I think it's taking some time to get to a good process, knowing that um, what we've heard from the community is uh, that the current process can be improved. Okay, so uh, if there's no further discussion on this motion, then we will go to the vote and uh, ask all those trustees in favor. We have unanimous support for this motion. Uh, so Trustee Wong. Chairperson, the next motion it, um, still is to do with Hamber and it's to, um, we're, we're seeking funds wherever we can uh, from a, a different level of government. So the motion is that the board immediately requests the city of Vancouver to pro provide funding for an auditorium and additional gym space with an option to have community use of these spaces when not required by the school. Uh, Thank you, Trustee Wong and uh, seconder for the motion. Trustee Gonzalez and Trustee Wong, you'd like to speak to this? Uh, Chairperson, I'm just um, reading the motion. When it was originally wrote, written, it was all uh, had to do with Hamburg. Is that relatively clear that I don't use to have the actual word of Hamburg School in here? Is that pretty clear? Because it's all should I be written as furthermore that would that we it's clear that it is Hamburg, or should I just insert the word Hamburg uh, required by Hamburg Secondary? I would Sorry, suggest. Last just Can inserting the word Hamber Secondary. Hamber, okay, all right. So replacement Hamber Secondary. Uh, what well, just with an option to have community use of these when not required by Hamber Secondary School. Friendly amendment. Uh, you're making the motion, so you right. can change I'll, the motion. Yes, I'll change the motion okay. at the very end by Hamber Secondary School. Sorry about that, oh. Chair. Yes, Secretary Treasurer. So I think if you, um, Trustee Wong, I think if you say um, the board immediately requests City of Vancouver to provide funding for an auditorium and additional gym space at Eric Hamber Secondary with an option to have community use of those spaces. Thank you. Um, gym space at Eric Hamber Secondary with an option to have community use of these spaces when not required by the school. I so move. Chairperson, may I speak to it? Um, like I said, the first the first motion uh, is requesting additional funds from the province. This motion is requesting funds from the city of Vancouver. And initial motion, and this, this has gone through a few different iterations um, as discussed with the community. Um, we are pointing possibly, you know, uh, from CACs, but it's not our role to ask the city where the funds would come from. Um, so it was uh, updated that there are spaces, and this is the whole idea of the uh, neighborhood um, learning centers, is that when we build, we should build uh, with the community in mind. So the request is that if we are using it for school and if we can work together, uh, that if they pr can provide additional funds, they would have access to those, uh, the gym or the auditorium after hours. So it's a win-win situation. And to have this addressed as soon as possible while we're doing the replacement uh, is, is the right direction to go. So 
uh, that's the purpose of this motion. Okay, thank you, Trustee Wong. And yeah, I, I know that there was qu quite a bit of discussion at the committee. Uh, is there any other discussion here at the board table? So then we will, uh, Trustee Reddy? To the chair, yeah, I did want to follow up on that discussion. I was wondering if by implicating the city of Vancouver's option here, that it would negate the last motion that we passed, that it's suggesting the province isn't responsible for funding the additional gym space, if we could speak to that. Trustee Wong? Chairperson, the um, area standards basically provides um, when we request a, a replacement or a new school, um, basically the area of, of that uh, new school replacement. We're still, it's still going out, um, a request for a proposal. And with it, each, um, anyone who's submitting of the usually three, uh, that they would uh, best design the school to fit what the request is from, from, the, from the district and from, from community input. So um, in it, there will definitely be a, a gym, not necessarily an auditorium. We don't know at this stage. So they will design the school and we'll get those designs submitted to, to the district. And so within there, uh, we are asking for if we can get the funds for those two areas, because those are the two areas where the city can use and can access. I don't think the city requires like a, uh, a uh, you know, um, a classroom or something like that. These are areas for the for the city to use for the for the public to use. So, um, you know, there's even with the space and as the discussion goes, even with the area standards that's presented to us, it, it's in our view or the committee's view was that it was inadequate. So, there is if they if the city can fund that portion of it it gives us more uh, opportunity to expand the other areas, um, the fashion designs, the, the other areas, the size of the gym, the number of gyms. So there's so many different areas that we need to address as well. I don't think there will be a lack of um, opportunity for input of, of where we can use that extra space. So thank you, Trustee Wong. And yes, I, I, I would emphasize it's a request of the city. You know, we, we want to work collaboratively with the city um, in, you know, across the city and in this neighborhood, which you know, we heard from the many presenters is expanding uh, under the Canby Corridor Plan. So to move on to vote on this motion, uh, all those in favor? Um, so, Trustee Cham Pedley, Trustee Hansen, Trustee Cho, Trustee Fraser, Trustee Gonzalez, Trustee Wong, and Trustee Ballantyne. All those opposed? Trustee Reddy. And the motion passes. And Trustee Wong, you have one more motion. Oh, you have several more matters arising. Right. right. Um, this one uh, still with still on the line of uh, Eric Hamber. Um, that the board seeks confirmation from the Ministry of Education that the province is committed to fully fund the verified cost of the Hamber Seismic Project. And a seconder. Trustee Cho. Chairperson, we're just uh, the board is just trying to get ahead of um, um, any potential, and we're seeing it in other districts as announced in the media with regards to escalation costs of, of projects. So this is just to get ahead of it um, uh, with regards to the lowest cost option and that the province um, is committed to fully fund that. So this is a motion that is, it seems pretty clear, but it's important for the board to, to make that um, statement or request. Okay, thank you. Um, anyone to <coughs> speak to this motion? <coughs> Trust you ready? Yeah, through the chair, just a question around what is verified cost? I think I can ask that of, uh, I don't know, Trustee Wong, this is your motion or would you like to pass that to staff? If I may pass that to staff to get the, I don't wanna go off with specifically with that uh, wording. Secretary Treasurer, David Green. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, 
in this particular case, I would say the verified cost of this project would be because it's a design build project and has to be um, it has to be go through the costing of a quantity surveyor before it's finalized. So I would say that the verified cost of this project would be that number that would come back from the quantity surveyor when that work is done is not completed yet. All right, if there's no other questions from trustees, I'll move on to uh, Trustee Gonzalez and then Trustee Reddy. Uh, thank you, Secretary Treasurer. Does that mean then that wouldn't include escalation costs because it would be that would be pre construction and an escalation costs would be post? Now, my understanding to to the chair to Trustee Gonzalez is that the you know the cost that would come back from the from the quantity survey would include escalation costs. Perhaps uh, Deputy Superintendent Nelson would comment on that. Uh, through the chair, I, I believe um, Secretary Treasurer Green that the costs would also go back to a quantity surveyor before tender. But I'm um, that's but this being design build, maybe that doesn't happen in this case. So. Trustee Reddy. Thank you. Through the chair, I wanted to propose an amendment. Is this a good time to do that? Yes. So I'm just wondering just to tie this motion together with the first motion so that the board seeks confirmation from the Ministry of Education that the province is committed to fully fund the verified cost of the Hamber Seismic Project. Oh, it's gone. Hang on one second. Um, and at minimum reflect the current school size and space allocations that we refer to in 62211. So that a baseline would be the existing size and space allocation of the school. Can you repeat the yep. amendment? Um, so I'm just thinking here. Verified cost of the Hamber Seismic Project and at minimum reflect the current school size and space allocation. Referring back to the first item, 62211, where we list uh, auditorium, gym space, arts, and programming facilities. If I could just say here, so to cur the current school size and space allocation, you would cut out the referring back to 62211 uh, allocation to ensure the space allocations for an auditorium, gym space, and arts programming. Current school size and space allocation, yes. You, you have that already. So a period after programming facilities, period. Um, okay, so Trustee uh, Reddy is putting forward a motion. i um, looking for a, an, an amendment to the motion, uh, looking for a second for discussion. Trustee Gonzalez. Um, speaking to the motion, Trustee Reddy. 
Yeah, um, I think we've already had this discussion too at facilities, but just now looking at the first motion, 62211, that we're requesting funds for these space allocations, and that is what the minimum school is now. So I think it would be important to mention that again in our conversation or uh, request back to the ministry that they understand that we're asking for what exists now, not anything more. So are you saying it exists at the current school or exists in the project as proposed? Through the chair, in the current school now, as Hamber sits today. Okay, thank you. Trustee Hansen? Yes, this is a, a question for Trustee Reddy. Is, is the intent of this motion to suggest that it should be something different than the area standards? Through the chair to Trustee Hansen, I think yes, because it seems like the area standards continues to be a hang up for us. Um, so I think it's important in the, this particular project to note that given the current parameters, we're not able to request the same as what we have today in this seismic rebuild upgrade. Trust to speak to David Green. Secretary Treasurer David Green. I, to, you, to the Chair, to Trustee Reddy, I think Trustee Reddy, um, you've added an element to this motion that is not necessary or is not connected because the first part of the motion talks about the verified cause of the seismic project. And now you've added, you know, reflecting the current, the current area hammer size, which is not the seismic project. So you may want to um, reconsider that. Thanks for your comment. Yeah, oh, sorry, go ahead. Student Trustee Hazel Pengillian. Um, thank you, Chair. I'm just a little confused. So we're asking the City of Vancouver to provide funding for the auditorium and just additional gym space. And then we're asking the Ministry of Education in the province to fully fund so are we are we um asking the the like the city of vancouver to only fund the auditorium and gym space and then have the board cover the the rest of it or trustee wong thank you thank you for the question um it's basically bottom line and as stated by all the delegations and the emails we're getting is we want an auditorium and gym proper gym space for the size of the school uh, in our view of what a proper size so that's and I'm trying to avoid getting a canned response from the ministry basically saying that these are the area standards everyone works within that area standards I'm trying to put myself in their shoes in order to make an exception for the Hamper project. And that's where number one comes in. Number, the third motion is working, or not, not directly, but working along the same lines as other districts where we're already seeing that uh, escalation costs exceeds uh, what the project is uh, that was uh, announced and funded by the province. So. Um, the two motions to me are completely different and to, for the third motion to, to have that change, to include por part of, um, motion one, um, to me, it, it, it doesn't work, um, uh, to, 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 to ask for, for the funding, um, as the base. Uh, of what the area standards gives us is is not what we're asking for. We're asking for the ensure the base the basics are covered off, even if there are changes in um, whatever the changes are, the escalation costs that the 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 bottom the base the basics are funded, and that's what that third motion is. Um, it might seem very clear for everybody. But it's something I think the the board needs to state um, right now, 
as we see other districts um, grapple with, with, with that issue. Trustee Ballantyne. Yeah, I don't think I can uh, support this part of it. I, I, t I totally uh, understand the intention, uh, but there's two different ideas in this one motion and you can't have two ideas that conflict with each other. The proposed verified cost of the seismic project and then you're talking about area standards of a, of a different project. So that does not, that's, that conflict, it totally runs into itself. So you need to split this up, I think, trustee ready or Propose a different motion, but I don't think I don't think we can support uh, it in a, in the way it's presented. Trustee Reddy, yeah, thanks to the chair. Thanks for thinking this through. I do. I am open to the idea of splitting it, and I do think it's important for us to make a request, a formal written request, that we are wanting the minimum reflected current school size and space allocation. So, I understand that the verified cost of Hamber Seismic Project doesn't include that as it stands. So perhaps considering this as related business or something is a better route. I'm open to that. Trustee Champ Headley. Thank you, Chair. Um, I thought the intention of the first motion um, is to cover that off, is to ask the province to fund the, um, the current facilities. So this one is just to cover the the um, the verified cost of the um, whatever is being proposed at the moment. So thank you. Uh, so I think um, the I think what a number of trustees are saying is that the motion number one, as it refers to considering, as it refers to ensure the space allocations for the an auditorium, gymnasium space and arts program facilities that the current Eric Hamber Secondary School are maintained. So I, I think the suggestion is that um, the reflecting the current school size has already been done in motion in the first motion that was passed on this issue, and that the motion this third motion is intended to address the cost escalations of the project as proposed. I think if you change, you can't have a verified cost if you're proposing to change the scope of the project. Um, okay, I'm getting the nod from the secretary treasurer that that's correct. So um, I think because there are two different pieces coming together in this motion, in this amendment, I wouldn't be able to support the amendment. But I, it's not that I don't support having the current space allocation. It's just it's already been covered in the first motion. Yeah, I'd still love for us to have a vote on this because I think that's an important distinction to make is that these decisions are happening together. Um, they are interrelated and to recognize that as a board that we're witnessing that. Okay, so if there's no one else to speak to the amendment, then we'll vote on the amendment. So all those in favor? Trustee Reddy, all those opposed? Trustee Ballantyne, Trustee Wong, Trustee Gonzalez, Trustee Fraser, Trustee Cho, Trustee Hansen, and Trustee Cham Pedley. So the amendment does not pass. And then we are back to the original motion, which, yes, finishes after project. And I hesitate to ask if there's anyone who wants to speak to the main motion. Um, so then we can move to vote on the motion. Uh, all those in favor? So Trustee Ballantyne, Trustee Wong, Trustee Gonzalez, Trustee Fraser, Trustee Cho, Trustee Hansen, and Trustee Cham Pedley. And those opposed? Trustee Reddy, uh, the motion passes. Um, so Trustee Wong, you have additional matters arising. Yes, um, motion, uh, relatively lengthy motion, but it's um, not really controversial. It has to do with the Fleming Elementary Utility Rights of Way bylaw. And it's a um, two, three, four, five part. I'll read it right off. That the Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver, Sir Sanford Fleming Elementary Utility Rights of Way bylaw 2019 be given first reading on the fourth day of March 2019. So, and a seconder for the motion, Trustee Gonzalez, 
Any discussion amongst trustees? Uh, those in approval? A unanimous support? A trustee Chung, just trustee Wong? That the Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver, Sir Sanford Fleming Elementary, Utility Rights of Way Bylaw 2019 be given second reading on the fourth day of March 2019. And a seconder to that motion, Trustee Cho. And all those in favor? Unanimous support, Trustee Wong. That the board approves having all three readings of the Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver, Sir Sanford Fleming Elementary Utilities Right of Way Bylaw 2019 at the board meeting on the fourth day of March 2019. And a seconder for that motion, Trustee Hansen. And to vote on that motion, all those in favor? Unanimous vote. That the Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver, Sir Sanford Fleming Elementary, Utility Rights of Way Bylaw 2019 be given third reading passed and adopted on the fourth day of March 2019. And a seconder. Trustee Gonzalez. And to vote on this motion, all those in favor? A unanimous vote. And that the signed sealed Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver, Sir Sanford Fleming Elementary Utility Rights of Way Bylaw 2019 be forwarded to the Ministry of Education Funding Department for registration and certification. And a seconder for the final motion, uh, Trustee Ballantyne. And all those in favor? A unanimous vote. Thank you, Trustee Wong. Thank and you. Are there any other matters arising from the Facilities Planning Committee? Uh, that being the case, we'll move on to the Student Learning and Wellbeing Committee and uh, Committee Chair, Trustee Reddy. Thank you, through the Chair. Um, I would like to move receipt of the report from the Student Learning and Wellbeing Committee meeting held on February 6th. Thank you, Trustee Reddy and a seconder, Trustee Champ Headley. Any discussion on the minutes themselves? Uh, then to vote to receive the report, all those in favor? Unanimous vote and matters arising, trustee ready? Thank you, through the chair. So we have four matters arising. Um, the first one is a motion from the Diversity Advisory Committee regarding anti-racism um, that reads here on the screen, that the Vancouver Board of Education reaffirms its commitment to eliminating racism. Furthermore, the board supports the development, implementation, and evaluation of procedures, programs, and services that promote and support the principles of anti-racism education. Thank you, Trustee Reddy, and a seconder for the motion, Trustee Gonzalez. And would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, um, thanks, through the chair. Um, yeah, I think also, um, Trustee Wong, feel free to add to this, um, but this was brought forth through the last couple of meetings at the Student Learning and Wellbeing Committee meeting um, in response to various incidents, um, specifically in November around anti-racism um, and race, responding to racism in particular. Um, and so the work of the Diversity Committee, which is ongoing uh, hearing um, opportunities to both support young people in the district, but also staff in responding to two racist incidents. Um, this was brought forth to the Student Learning and Wellbeing Committee. Trustee Wong. Thank you, Chairperson. I always consider it, I, I know it's this, this is the main motion. Um, there was an action item for, with regards to that motion, and I always consider it as the second part of the motion, but it, it's not. But uh, let me, if I can just read it, action for the student learning well-being, that the student learning and well-being accept a report from diversity committee um, outlining current initiatives within the Vancouver School District that support anti-racism as well as initiatives planned for the future. So um, I think that goes with it, but not part of the motion. And if, if passed that, we've already had a, a, a diversity committee meeting uh, since then and stated that the motion hasn't been passed yet, but we're, we're gonna discuss it at the board and then it'll go back to the diversity committee. Okay, thank you, Trustee Wong. Uh, any other trustees? Trustee Reddy? 
Thank you, through the chair. I did want to um, propose an amendment for the board on this motion. It's going again, right? Um, let me just bring up my notes here. So uh, the motion currently reads that the Vancouver Board of Education reaffirms its commitment to eliminating racism. Furthermore, the board supports the development, implementation, and evaluation of procedures, programs, and services that promote and support the principles of anti-racism and that the board reestablish and hire an anti-racism mentor as soon as possible. We'll just wait for the wording to come up on the uh, screens. Okay, thank you, Trustee Reddy. So that uh, proposed amendment to the motion and uh, looking for a seconder so we can have discussion. <coughs> Trustee Gonzalez. And Trustee Reddy speaking to the amendment. Yeah, through the chair. So I know we've talked about this before in December and since the uh, incident in November, we've had a lot of uh, conversations with community members and meetings. Um, lots of one-on-one -on -one sessions we heard at the Student Learning and Wellbeing Committee meeting from stakeholders as well as from student and parent delegations um, that there's a lot of interesting and important work happening in the district around diversity and engaging our diverse urban populations um, and that the impacts of race are still being felt by students in all parts of our district um, and that in response to some of the experiences that have been shared with us um, that it is our opportunity and opening for us to respond to those requests with a very clear ask from these communities to have anti-racism uh, mentorship to bolster um, the work already being done by the diversity committee and other efforts in the district um, so i'm bringing this forward as um, part of all of these ongoing meetings and consultations okay thank you trustee reddy Trustee Wong. Uh, chairperson, um, yeah, I'd love to have that position. Um, we're, we just discussed earlier with regards to the process and the timeline for the budget. And I think um, this is part of the budget process. Um, to hire a, a, a position. So, um, so maybe I can ask the question yeah. of our Secretary Treasurer. If uh, the, uh, the wording is as soon as possible, would as soon as possible be through the current budget process or is there an opportunity, you know, I'll just ask what, what is as soon as possible? I think Madam Chair would be through the budget process. Trustee Wong. Uh, Chairperson, there was a brief discussion um, as Trustee Reddy uh, brought it uh, to the diversity committee um, for the first for the first time. And I think there is a, a discussion that was briefly started. There was only a few minutes left. Um, the, the diversity committee will be meeting again at the end of April. And I think um, we, there were discussions uh, earlier and I forgot, I think Trustee Cho was reporting from DPAC uh, a couple of meetings ago with regards to the question of um, uh, different departments working um, in silos of one another and they were asking the diversity committee or they were asking the board uh, how to best integrate um, and so the discussion with regards to an anti-racism uh, mentor or even a subcommittee um, should go through uh, the diversity committee as the first step. But um, with regards to a position that was quite, I believe, well received, 
um, but I think we need to have uh, input. And I don't think it's that far away. It's just a month away with regards to that. And then the, with rolling into the budget budget process as well um, to get clearer information. And I, I think there is a lot of talk with regards to a position or expanding the diversity committee, which does address anti-racism. Okay. Um, Trustee Cho. Yes, thank you through the chair. Um, yes, I was um, involved in some of these conversations and I it was my understanding that we were going to take the information back to student learning and well-being and then work through the budget process to look at adding a position like that. So it was definitely something people were interested in. We also were hoping to get more feedback from uh, stakeholders at the next student learning and well-being committee meeting and then as well at DPAC if we have another meeting. So. Um, the as soon as possible piece was, you know, I'm wondering if again, it could just maybe be rephrased in line with the current budget process or something like that. I think what I'm hearing from Trustee Cho and Trustee Wong is that um, f at the diversity committee, and uh, there was a, you know, a strong, uh, an indication of support for adding an ad additional position in this that would that would um, take on this role, um, but that for the board to make a decision ahead of getting input from the diversity committee, which you know contains all our stakeholders, um, might be a too specific a commitment. But maybe if the commitment was to the board, could make the commitment to bring a position into the budget process with the. <coughs> I think I might be making an amendment here, but um, with the input from the diversity committee, I, I, th I, I think that's what uh, Trustee Wong was saying. So maybe I'll go back to Trustee Wong. Chairperson, we, we started the discussion. It was, there was only uh, a few minutes remaining in the diversity committee meeting. Um, the agenda was full to begin with. So we received the report uh, from Trustee Reddy and we're committed to having a fuller discussion at the next meeting, which is the end of April, and then incorporate that with, with it, which is not a motion, and that's why I read it out, with regards to um, reporting back to the student learning well-being. And I think once it reports back to the student learning well-being, that, but also to include it in the budget process, um, to have that and I think the budget process would come before the report coming back to student learning and well-being so I agree that it should be placed in both areas uh, the budget um, as soon as possible with regards to to input amongst others and I'd like to hear from other stakeholder groups as well it could it could be a slam dunk um, and that's that's the direction we're going but I I don't want to and, and I think a number of trustees would be advocating in that direction, but I think we need to hear from all stakeholder groups um, first, rather than put that in ahead of all the other, uh, anything else that's coming forward. But so there's two areas, diversity committee, back to student learning well-being to get a fuller discussion and at the budget process. And I don't, I don't want that dropped off from either, either directions. Trustee Ballantyne? I fully support what Trustee Wong has just said. Trustee Gonzalez? Yeah, uh, if, I, sorry, <laughs> through the chair, I just wanted to also comment. I think uh, most of us, if not all of us, would support this notion, but I do believe we have a process that I think it needs to go through formally before it comes back to the board for that final. So I'm with uh, Trustee Ballantyne and Trustee Wong on this. Thanks. Trustee Reddy. Thanks to the chair. I am definitely open to amendments and really appreciate the discussion. And I think that um, it has gone through the process of the student learning well-being and those stakeholders reported back on it. I'm absolutely open to having more stakeholders have feedback to it um, and recognizing that many folks have made their time available to get 
us to a point where we can identify what's needed. Um, so not to discount the work that's already been asked of community members um, and that community members, students especially, are waiting on us to make a response that's clear in terms of direction. So we're not asking them to come back to another meeting in April or June or whenever that might be. So I think it's really important that we're clear about in this motion or amended motion that um, when that would be so that we have like a clear direction. So Trustee Red, I hear you're open to a uh, change of wording of the motion. Um, maybe we could just take a break for a minute and ask our staff to help with uh, proposing something that's come up from all of the discussion here. So um, I, I the amendment could read and that the board reestablish and hire an anti We'll just wait for the wording to come back up and then I'll go to Trustee Valentine. Okay, Trustee Valentine. Thank you. Uh, I do appreciate what Trustee Reddy is trying to bring forward here. And uh, there's, there's really no urgency that this is being put into the motion. Uh, there's no, the, the, if, if this has gone through the proper process, which is a debate through the budget process, which is what Trustee Reddy really does know about, and all of us know the, the budget um, process is coming up very shortly, the earliest we can actually hire an anti-racism mentor or person or, is going to be September anyway. So I believe it should go back to what Trustee Cho has said, and it should go back to that committee. Nothing is going to be happening anytime sooner than September anyways. So I don't see why we start to do one-offs here. This is not the way we do business at the school board. I really don't think so. I mean, we need to do it through the proper processes. I appreciate the intent, and I think we all do. We're all on side with that. But then to to butt this one up against something else and not go back to committee, and it's just it's just going sideways as far as I'm concerned in that respect. And this should be discussed, I think, a little bit earlier rather than at the in public here, you know, like and trying to scramble for words that may not actually be the right words. Okay. Uh, Trustee Reddy? Yeah, thanks so much for the discussion. Yeah, I really, I wouldn't bring it forward if I didn't think it was urgent. I think that it is an issue that was before us as soon as we were elected, which is why I think it's really important that we respond, um, even in principle, to commit that we hear what's happening and we are responding with leadership. Um, I understand that there is a bro budget process. I've been made aware of that process. I'm happy to participate. So I'm not trying to sideline that process, but I do think that this is an urgent issue that's been coming forth 
in multiple ways from many people across the district um, in terms of what's needed. So, yeah, I think it's okay for us to have a voice on this tonight and a vote on it. Uh, Trustee Hansen, then Trustee Champ Headley, Trustee Wong. Uh, generally speaking, I'm a stickler for process, but I think I support Trustee Reddy um, on this motion tonight. I, I'm just concerned the diversity committee, and they're going back to um, the student learning committee. It's just it's just a lot of back and forth. I'm concerned the budget process is moving quickly, and if the diversity committee is not meeting till the end of April, and we've already had um, committees of the whole, I just I just think it should probably move a little quicker than that. Um, but I, I do appreciate my fellow trustees' concerns. Um, but this might be one of those exceptions. The only one other thing I have is that maybe it's a slight technicality, but I'm not sure. It's, is it the board that would actually be hiring or is it the Vancouver School Board? I'm just not sure if the board refers to us or the Vancouver School Board entity. So uh, ask the Secretary Treasurer to address that question. It would be the Vancouver School Board that would hire somebody. Okay, um, so uh, the Secretary Treasurer is just suggesting that it's changed from board to Vancouver School Board to be a, a little clearer. And Trustee Cham Pedley. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'd also like to um, support the amendment. Um, I, too, um, normally prefer to stick with due process, um, but I also think that there given that the um, direction of the diversity committee and the conversation so far has been pointing to this solution anyway, I also don't see any harm in making this amendment and, and voting on this tonight. So, thank you. Thank you. And Trustee Wong? Uh, Chairperson, as stated earlier, there, there was only minutes for a discussion with regards to the request uh, for an anti-racism mentor. Uh, and within that brief few minutes of discussion, and it was stated a couple of times, and it needs to be addressed by the diversity committee, uh, is with regards to uh, working in silos um, and to coordinate uh, between, if it's anti-racism mentor, diversity, LGBTQ, um, there was value as stated by the committee members to have that discussion together. I mean, there could be two positions within the diversity. There could be one and a half. We don't know how that budget's gonna roll out. We do know, and I believe the board is in agreement that there needs to be someone to address anti-racism. But, um, you know, there is a budget process. Uh, it's gonna be next month, um, pretty soon. The meeting of the of the diversity committee is is next month as well. Uh, if there's a request to expedite that, I think that could be accommodated. Um, this this to 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 move ahead, we we struck we have an, a diversity committee, but we're moving ahead. We've asked them to have a discussion with it uh, based on that motion, and now we're 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 moving right around the diversity committee. Which is, which is, you know, the board can do that. I would suggest maybe uh, we can call the diversity committee together earlier if there is, if there is that much of a rush. Uh, they are very well aware of this, this motion, and but it's, it's up to the board. Trustee Cho, uh, thank you through the chair. Um, as I know you were saying, there is a process in the diversity committee and going back to student learning and well-being. And while that is what we originally discussed, since it's been added in the motion as per the upcoming budget process, I feel better about that because it still would be part of that process. So I don't see any harm in going ahead with this. And it can still be considered and discussed at the diversity committee and at student learning well-being to maybe fine-tune some of what we're looking for, but there's still the commitment has been made and it's clear what our intention is and that we see a need for this role. So because it includes the upcoming budget process in the amendment, um, I feel good about that. 
Okay, I have a, a question from uh, Superintendent Suzanne Hoffman. Um, to you, Trustee Reddy, I'm just curious, and this is my own clarification, by anti-racism mentor, is that a teaching position? I'm not sure if the collective agreement language mentor assumes teacher or support staff position. Um, through the chair to the superintendent, um, from what I've been hearing through those meetings and consultations, it was a mentor 1.0 FTE, um, and I believe it's a reestablishment. So perhaps looking back at the, pre the previous position would give that answer. Uh, Associate Superintendent Carmen Batista. Through the chair, um, the mentor position is a termed position. So in the in the past, it was a termed position that's uh, two years. With if you were to change it to teacher, then it would be a district teacher with no end in term. It would be an ongoing position. So with a mentor, it would, by calling it a mentor, it's a termed teaching position at the district level. By calling it anti-racism teacher, it gives it uh, sort of no end date. Um, so I think maybe, Trustee Reddy, this is part of the discussion that could be had at the diversity committee. So, um, and as we've heard saying mentor is a very specific one, you might want to change that wording to position to be determined in conjunction with the diversity Do committee. The yes, position. Mm -hmm. So position. And then as uh, Trustee Cho pointed out, because this is going through the budget process, you know, we could still have all those discussions that Trustee Wong was referring to through the diversity in the Student Learning and Wellbeing Committee because, you know, the timeline aligns on that. So I think as the mover of the amendment, you can change it as you wish. And I think we've had a, you know, a pretty robust discussion. And are you comfortable with the wording as it is on the screen now? Okay. Yes. So given that robust discussion, is there anyone who would like to again speak to this amendment to the motion? So I, I will finish by saying the beginning of the motion speaks about reaffirming our commitment. And given that, and, and given what's um, in the first part of the motion, the amendment I think takes action uh, it allows the board to take action on that reaffirmation very, very quickly. So uh, I'll be in favour of the amendment. So moving to vote, all those in favour of, of the amendment. So Trustee Gonzalez, Trustee Fraser, Trustee Reddy, Trustee Cho, Trustee Hansen and Trustee Champ Headley. And those against, Trustee Wong and Trustee Ballantyne. So the amendment passes. And then we can go back to vote on the amended motion. And with no other discussion from trustees, we'll move to that vote for all those in favor of the amended motion. A unanimous vote in favor. Cool. So thank you, Trustee Reddy. And you have further matters arising from this committee. Yes, thank you. So item 6322 is motion from all on board. Um, the motion reads, and it will be up on the screen, I believe. That the Vancouver Board of Education endorses with a letter to TransLink's Mayor Council, all on board's request for free transit access for children under 18 years of age and supports the proposal of reduced price transit based on a sliding scale using the market-based measure for all low-income people. Thank you, Trustee Reddy. And a seconder for this motion, Trustee Wong. And would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, uh, we had the discussion at the Student Learning and Wellbeing Committee meeting. Um, we brought this back twice to reflect the motion that was passed by the City of Vancouver, um, which included these two pieces, as well as a fair elimination um, component that we chose not to put forward tonight. Okay, any other discussion from trustees? Um, Trustee Gonzalez and Trustee Wong. Just through the chair, is that a spelling error in there, market basket measure? That doesn't seem like that would be the right word. I'm just checking. Through the chair, um, yes, I looked at that as well. This was in the original um, motion that was presented to the Student Learning and Wellbeing Committee meeting. 
And it reflects the wording of the city's motion. Uh, Trustee Wong. Chairperson, the first portion part of the motion um, came to the school board once in the past uh, with regards to free transit, and it was supported by the board at that time. So it's 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 um, even more important, I, I presume now, for that motion. I, I particularly want to speak on the first part of the motion, as it directly affects um, teachers and students in the system. I think it's important to, and the term was, and I citizenize our students to ha allow them to have access to the community and for free transit, whether it's um, through the school system uh, on field trips or programs. I know teachers, it's, it's a really challenging time to start gathering uh, funds for, for bus, um, the bus passes and the coinage and all that. Sometimes that's quite a hindrance uh, to go out on the field trips. So um, if the field trips could be covered um, and also after hours, uh, after school hours for, for students and young people to be able to access the community, I think it, it's a positive for education, a positive for learning. And I think we've always talked about uh, lifelong learning, uh, you know, within the school system and outside of it. So I, I think it's a very worthy cause. Uh, I know there are a number of councils that have adopted and passed this, and for the board to um, the board to come on board with regards to to this motion, I think it, it's very important and shows our support for our teachers and our students. Okay, thank you, trustees. Um, so, if there's no other comments, um, yeah, I think that uh, this this is an important part of trying to get equity for our students. Um, the free transit, as, as Trustee Wong says, both within the schools and in students getting to the schools. So, moving to the vote, all those in favour, a unanimous support there, and back to Trustee Reddy. So, item 6323 is Board Authority Authorized Courses. The motion reads that the board approves the 43 revised grade 11 and 12 BAA courses listed as attached to the committee report. Thank you. And a seconder for the motion? Trustee Cho, I, I know there was discussion at committee. Is, is there any other discussion here? So uh, we'll move to the vote. All those in favor? A unanimous approval and trustee ready one more matter arising item 6324 school calendar the motion reads that the board approved the dates outlined in this report for the winter breaks and spring breaks in the 2019 20 2020 21 and 21 22 school years as well as for the non-instructional days for the 2019 20 school year as presented to committee Thank you. And a seconder for that motion? Trustee Cho. And any discussion? Any further discussion? So we'll move to the vote. All those in favour? A unanimous vote for the school calendar, approving the school calendar. And are there any other matters arising from the Student Learning and Wellbeing Committee? Then we will move on to the Finance Committee and the Chair, Trustee Hansen. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I move receipt of the report from the Finance Committee on February 20th, 2019. Thank you, Trustee Hansen, and a seconder. Trustee Chan Pedley. And any discussion on the minutes themselves? So then we will uh, vote on receiving the report. All those in favor? A unanimous vote. Uh, moving to matters arising, Trustee Hansen. Yes, uh, there's just one motion uh, before the board this evening that's coming from the Finance Committee, and that's with respect to uh, the needs budget terms of reference. And it states that the Board of Education approved the needs budget terms of reference. Thank you. And a second for that motion, Trustee Gonzalez. 
If I can just briefly state, I mean, it, it's clear from uh, the attachment what the terms of reference were, uh, but for the benefit of our uh, board members, the terms of reference were uh, prepared diligently by our Secretary Treasurer and the Assistant Secretary Treasurer in consultation with all of our stakeholders. So there's been numerous revisions. They've been out to the public and, and seen a number of times. So um, I, I'm confident uh, that these terms of reference capture what the committee intended and um, and we're obviously supportive of it. And just to check on the uh, report says that uh, the approval will be after final review of the needs budget working group and that review has happened? That's correct. It happened uh, last Thursday evening. All right. Thank you, uh, Trustee Hansen. And if there's no more discussion, we'll move to vote on this motion. All those in favour? Right. A unanimous approval. And um, there are no other matters arising as they were dealt with at previous board meetings. That's correct, uh, Trustee Hansen? It is, yes. Okay. So uh, at this stage, I'll ask that um, any question period forms be handed in to our staff at the side. And I can move on to the reports on private sessions. So at the meeting of January 28th, the, there was a private session on January 28th, 2019, and the board discussed matters pertaining to the superintendent's evaluation process, bargaining, and property matters. And at the private session of February 19th and 20th, 2019, the board discussed matters pertaining to seismic projects and made a decision to award a tender for the Maple Grove Elementary Seismic Upgrade and also recommended the Henry Hudson Seismic Project go to the Vancouver Project Office Steering Committee for approval. And next on the agenda is the reports from trustee representatives. And first is trustee Cham Pedley on the Special <coughs> Education Advisory Committee. And are there any questions of trustee Cham Pedley on her report? Thank you for your report, trustee Cham Pedley, your clear report. And then the second report from trusted representatives and I should say that we don't have as many reports as we typically would have because the city advisory committees are not up and running yet so we have made our appointments as a board but the city has not yet confirmed which committees will be meeting or and contact, contacted us to um, let us know our appointments have been made although I understand that will happen in the I'm hoping in the next month or so uh, the second report is from Trustee Wong on the Diversity Committee, and uh, he's, he's corrected that this meeting, there were two meetings, one on January the 29th and one on February the 26th. Uh, any questions from trustees on this meeting, on this report? I think we've gone over it in some detail already. Um, we have new business. I'm not aware of any new business. And not uh, <coughs> <coughs> we're just checking on a pro on our procedures here. Um, yes, our student trustee had contemplated bringing forward a motion, and so she and I had discussed that earlier, and perhaps a little miscommunication, but probably the appropriate time for that to come forward would have been at her report. And we were discussing how possibly through Trustee Parrott, who's not here tonight, but that's the liaison trustee, that could then bring forward a, um, a motion from our student trustee to be contemplated for a vote. So can your motion wait, and then we can make that happen at the appropriate time? Yes. <laughs> Okay, so um, student trustee Hazel Pangalian will work with uh, uh, Trustee Parrott, who is the trustee liaison to the VDSC, to um, move forward what she's contemplating. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, then we have two notices of motion um, from Trustee Gonzalez and speaking to the first one, Trustee Gonzalez. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to bring uh, forward a notice of motion uh, regarding renewable strategy for the uh, mission free landscape equipment. And in reference to our strategic plan with goal three, creating a culture of care and shared social responsibility, uh, encourage and enhance practices that support cultural, emotional, physical, and mental well being. Goal four, to provide effective leadership, governance, and stewardship, effectively utilizing school district resources and facilities, and implement the recommendations of the sustainability action plan. So the proposed motion that the VBE direct staff to develop a transition plan to replace gas-powered landscape maintenance equipment with emission-free equivalents or quasi-equivalents where possible. Staff should report back to the VBE with their findings and recommendations. Plan should include financial considerations, including purchase, usage, maintenance, and end-of-life replacement costs, identifying possible grant money and Minister of Education funding opportunities, recognizing non-financial benefits such as carbon emission reduction, disposal of refuse oil and other parts, satisfaction productivity of staff and satisfaction of students, identifying ways of collaboration and volume buying on this program with the City of Vancouver and the Park Board, if applicable. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Gonzalez. Um, so you're moving this motion and looking for a seconder. This notice of motion. Trustee Reddy, um, um, would you like this uh, notice of motion to be referred to committee? Yeah, yes. Uh, I have a note on that. Um, <clears throat> the Facilities Planning Committee. Um, and I've asked that a report come back May 15th um, at, at that committee um, so that the committee can recommend a course of action to be approved by the board at the May board meeting in time for possible requests for ministry funding in the five-year capital plan submission. Okay, so I think the new piece of information is that you're asking for a report from staff for the May 15th um, facilities planning. Facilities. Okay, so I'll um, go to our staff and for their input on that. I understand the contemplation from the five-year capital plan submission perspective, but I'm just mindful of all of the other work that we're bringing forward with respect to the long-range facilities plan that will be coming up to those meetings going forward. So I don't know if there's flexibility in that from the Secretary Treasurer's perspective for the capital plan submission. Um, I could ask staff to look into it and see what we can see if we can come up with a way to um, incorporate this into the um, the work of the committee to go to the five-year capital plan process. Okay, so um, I think where we're at is that uh, we've got the motion before us as a board, and uh, Trustee Gonzalez, as a mover, would like to have it referred to the facilities planning committee. We will get some information about possible costs and capital plan submission at that meeting um, without a commitment to uh, within the capacity of staff to, to work in that time frame. So I'm looking around the board table and uh, I'm seeing that there's, there's a lot of nods to, for, for that to go forward. Uh, so thank you, Trustee Gonzalez. I'm moving on to the second notice of motion you have. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Chair. Um, my second note was the motion, Vulnerable Youth Social Housing, in reference to the Strategic Plan Goal 3 to create a culture of care and shared social responsibility, encourage and enhance practices that support cultural, emotional, physical, and mental well-being, support effective, thoughtful transitions for all students at each stage of their development, increase Indigenous students' sense of pride, self-esteem, belonging, place, acceptance, and caring in their schools, support collaborative relationships with community partners, <clears throat> that enhance student learning and well-being. Excuse me. <clears throat> goal, uh, goal four, provide effective leadership, governance, and stewardship, uh, including advocate for public education, effectively utilize school district resources and facilities, and support effective communication, engagement, 
and community partnerships. My proposed motion is that the VBE request staff to identify in collaboration with stakeholders and VBE partners at the City of Vancouver, Province of BC and the Federal Government, ways of utilizing VBE owned land for the development of social housing to accommodate vulnerable youth as they complete their high school requirements and graduate. The work would include asking staff to develop guiding principles for which VBE land would be suitable for the development and construction of vulnerable youth social and possibly other types of youth housing, identify and consider the capital and operating costs associated with developing vulnerable youth social housing and present possible scenarios, determine the need vis-a-vis -vis actual vulnerable student numbers, consult and work with VBE staff in relation to implementation with the long range facilities plan and meet with stakeholder groups, community groups and the public to solicit feedback. And that next steps would be for staff to bring forward a plan that includes identifying city requirements regarding zoning permits, et cetera, specific goals and targets with timelines and deliverables, and how the VBE will work with the three levels of government, federal, provincial, and municipal to determine funding options to accomplish these goals. Thank you, Trustee Gonzalez. And looking for a seconder, Trustee Champ-Headley. Um, and again, Trustee Gonzalez, would you like to have this referred to committee? That would be the best, I guess, at this point, yes. Okay. Thank you. All right, so looking around the board table, we uh, have nods of agreement for that. So thank you. Um, so those are our two notices of motion. And uh, we have a number of uh, questions that have come in. So we will take a five minute break just to uh, sort through those and make sure that we are answering uh, as best we can this evening.
Right, thank you everyone. We have the questions aligned and um, the first question that we have is from, is I was at the December 17th, 18th board meeting and heard the various comments from parents and representatives from the community, how they felt black students are not being supported by the VSB. What or how is the VSB addressing the concerns raised in the meeting? And I think that the uh, motion that we passed this evening um, that came forward from the Student Learning and Wellbeing Committee about the development, implementation and evaluation of procedures, programs and services, and then the specific action around the anti-racism mentor are the uh, outcomes of those, um, are the outcomes that the board has committed to. So we have given the Indigenous student graduation rate in our district, especially as opposed to the provincial average, but also generally, has there been any consideration of how school closures of schools with high Indigenous populations may further affect these rates? And um, you know, in the long range facilities plan, there is contemplation that there could be school closures. And I would say that um, if, if uh, any school closures were to come forward, there would be consideration of vulnerable populations at any school um, by the board in any decision making. And for the hammer motions passed tonight, if the board advocacy is successful and we get funding for increased gym space and auditorium, will the footprint and size of the new build be increased to accommodate the additions? Or will we need to reduce other already reduced areas to fit the additions in? And I think the first motion that we passed that came from the facilities planning committee uh, spoke to um, getting those pieces of the building at the same size as the current school. I'd have to, as the current school. So that implies that the footprint would be increased from that um, under the ministry area standards. And then at the February 13th Facilities Planning Committee meeting, there was a fourth motion discussed. It read that the board requests the VPO to consider designing the new Hamber Secondary School building in a way that would allow for future expansion. Given the expedited timeline, expedited project timeline, and because the RFQ expires tomorrow and will be moving into the RFP phase, could this motion be brought forward and re-examined? It is critical to reintroduce this motion to avoid incurring additional costs if future expansions to Eric Hammer are approved at a later date. And the motions that came forward, yes, there were four motions that went to the Facilities Planning Committee and the committee decided to move the three motions forward. And I, my understanding from that committee was that the intent was to try and look for a positive outcome in the short term. So the positive outcome is that we get additional funding from the province, that we get, you know, we request additional funding from the um, city and focus on those positive outcomes rather than having to design to have funding come at a later date. So that's where the committee landed at the last meeting. Um, I assume, depending on how these motions move forward, that the committee could always reconsider um, the, the um, options to uh, bring back the motion to um, design for expansion. And we have, on what specific date will the district review of food programs be made public? Why has this review taken so long to prepare? So this, um, there is no specific date for this review to come forward yet, as it's still being worked on. Uh, it has taken a long time pre to prepare because um, I think there is a lot of work to do. Um, the um, the report was revised. We only received the revised report in December. Okay, the 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 uh, VSB report is based on a report from consultants, and that revised re the the consultants revised their report, and we got that in December. So our internal staff are still working on that, and it will come to committee, um, and it's anticipated it will be this spring. So those are all the questions we have um, 
from the audience. So thank you for coming out. Thank you for sharing your questions with us. And um, thank you for engaging in district business. Um, the only uh, business remaining is to adjourn the meeting, but I do have to remind trustees that we have to return to our private session after the public board meeting this evening. Uh, so a motion to adjourn, Trustee Gonzalez, and seconded by Trustee Chan Pedley, right in my line of sight, thank you. And all those in favor? Unanimous vote to adjourn, thank you. And thank you everyone for coming. <laughs>